4 p.m. I'll call this meeting of Putnam County Planning Commission to order. Um, before we start, Putnam County has had a great loss this week in the death of Captain Mark Elam. And as was done yesterday at the beginning of the Board of County Commission meeting, I'd like to take just a moment of silence um, for us to give thanks for, for the life of Mark and for what he's done and um, our thoughts for his family. Thank you. Um, we have a lot of things going on coming up, but before we get started on cases, I would like to do first, I would like to introduce Gabriel Quintes. Gabriel is the new man, is it planning man, planning development manager. Uh, he took the position that was vacated when Mike Brown moved to um, Clay County. Gabriel comes to us from Titusville. He has a wealth of experience even though he looks like he's 12 <laughs> but uh, everybody looks young to me anymore but Gabriel we're so glad that you've moved to Palatka Putnam <coughs> County and your family and we certainly look forward to working with you and we also this will be the first ca first day that uh, Wendy Hickey actually takes the helm and presents all three cases she presented one case last month and Jenny Kidd it's always great to have you here and we're glad you're back, and uh, we look forward to working with you. Um, the site visit log, I think, has gone around, so if everybody would make sure you sign that. Um, let me just briefly give you an update from yesterday's Board of County Commission meeting. Uh, first, the Internet Cafe, as we've called it, or the Simulated Gambling Ordinance, was read for the first time yesterday and did receive a favorable vote on first reading. It will now be read for a second reading on April 27th at 5.05, time specific, uh, time certain. So that will be the second reading of the Internet Cafe Ordinance that we have worked on. Uh, I got the impression from a number of commissioners that we'll see it again uh, before too terribly long to, to help put in some more regulations on the legal side of, of those kinds of establishments that don't want to engage in illegal activities and gambling. Um, additionally, there was a public hearing on the transmittal of the comprehensive plan for 2020-2035. And um, there were a number of speakers, uh, most of whom were speaking about the density issues that have been changed in the Putnam County Comp Plan that we had worked <coughs> on. They were under the erroneous assumption that we were going to be building humongous amounts of housing on all of our ag land and that, you know, if somebody owned 300 acres of land that they would be able to have, you know, 60 homes built on that land. Well, they were reminded very carefully by many members of the commission that, number one, the subdivision law would prohibit that, and that's a state part of our comp plan and the land development code. And number two, it would have to go through either a subdivision or a PUD, and that's not going to happen until somebody has a lot of money they're going to invest in something. But the... <coughs> The word had gotten out that we we're doubling and tripling the densities in some of our areas, and you all know how hard we worked to vet that. And uh, we were totally supported by the county commission. To a person, everyone said that the goals and objectives and policies that we presented to them, that stuff we worked on for hours, was as good as it could be, and it was very, very strong, and they were very happy with it, and they felt like the job we had done was, was done excellently. So that was a very nice thing to hear, and it was a very nice thing to be a part of receiving that. Um, there were a few concerns about our eliminating the mandatory BMPs. 
but that too was not acted on. Uh, you know, we went to a recommended BMP rather than mandated. And uh, it was explained that many of the changes that we made in the plan were made at the request and at the, the urging of groups of people, not just individuals. So that was very good. Now the other side of that is the data and analysis section was rejected. Uh, they will not accept what was presented to them and they have sent that back to us with a date certain mandate that we revise it, update it, clean up the misinformation that is in it, and basically be more specific for Putnam County's future and trends and analysis of where we are today and where we've come from and give a hint of where we can be going in the future. Uh, we changed the, the goals, objectives, and policy to be very positive. The data and analysis did not present a positive picture. And that's one of the things that we've got to correct. The motion was made and seconded and unanimously approved that it be sent back to us and that we have it complete by the first meeting of the commission in May, which is May the 11th. Uh, Brian Teeple was here yesterday. Uh, it did, it was, and I was the one who made it quite clear that the information that we had received was received at the 11th and a half hour. And it was by no means what we had requested throughout the process. And that it was by no means of a quality that should have been. I agreed and offered to bring it back to the commission. And I also agreed that I would be heavily engaged in preparing and mining the data that's going to be necessary <coughs> to make this the right kind of a data analysis that we need. So basically what we'll wind up with is the goals, objectives, and policies. A data analysis that is a numerical analysis with graphic, you know, pie charts, bar charts, whatever, some sort of a graphic identification, graphic presentation, and then a brief narrative to address how that data relates to the future of Putnam County. And then we will have the documents that were kind of piecemeal together and tacked onto the end of what we were given. Those documents will be appendic appendices and they will be shown clearly as effective as of X date and not be showing that this is how it is today. We're not going to go back and rewrite or redo any of the data that was in those documents. We will ask the Chamber of Commerce to update their information as much as they can. But we're not going to do it for them. We're not going to do that ourselves. Um, Brian is to be working on this data and he is to be sending it to me as soon as he gets it. I will tell you quite honestly, I will also be pulling that data. I've got the same resources and I can do that. So what you'll see is going to be a lot different than what you've seen in the past. But Jim and I had a long talk with Brian and although we really have no carrot to entice him to really get this done because the payment for the data and analysis has already been made, it was made a, over a year ago. We, um, we realize it has to be done. And Jim and I are committed to getting it done right and um, make it happen. But I do bring to you Commissioner Harvey and really the entire commission's gratitude for the long hours that you all have put in, for your patience, for your tolerance of this process, and for your interfacing with your commissioners. That has been critical. And I, I think it's something that you all have done very well. Um, I know of three of you who I know have been in close contact with your commissioners in the past 48 hours. And that's a good thing. And I spoke with Larry this afternoon at length. 
So uh, I'll be reaching out to Mr. Rawls, who seems to be leading the information request for numerical information, and we're going to do that. We're not going to do any highfalutin, chi-squared, you know, statistical manipulation. We're going to take the data and present it in a clear fashion that shows that Putnam County does know how to wear shoes. So that's where we're headed with this. We will need to have a called meeting for us to take a look at that data and to either say, go back to the drawing board, you missed the target, or to bless it so we can take it on to the commission. And we've reserved this room for May the 4th, which is the first Wednesday in May at 4 p.m. And we assume and we plan for that to be a fairly brief meeting. Um, I think we can do it. That's a Tuesday. Yes, it's a week before the county commission meeting. Okay. Right. We have to have it that early so they can advertise and get the proper uh, materials out to the county commission. So what we will do is have everything ready for you to take a look at, and we will do this. And the other thing, I see Gabriel and Wendy over there biting their lips and holding their, their tongues because they're going, what are we gonna have to do? You all will not be burdened with any of this. You have your work to do. You came in here to do a job. We have to clean up a mess. Jim, Brian Teeple, and I will bear that front. So you guys don't have to worry. Jenny, you'll be doing some photocopying, but I don't know that you'll be doing much more than that. It's not fair to you for us to come in and ask you to, to walk in and all of a sudden create a document that would take you a long time to do. It's not fair. It's not your job. So that's where we're going with that. I do want to thank Mr. Schwing for being at the commission meeting yesterday, sitting on the back row holding a chair down for us. I appreciate that very much. She's still back there, too. Yeah, the chair's still there. <laughs> I was sitting up on the front row with Mr. Teeple. That was where they were throwing things at people. I didn't know. <clears throat> there were a few slings and arrows that came that way. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it was, it was not a bad process. But um, with that being said, Ken, would you please read our Pledge of Ethics? As a member of the... Putnam County Planning Commission, I pledge to come to meetings prepared for items on the agenda, willing and ready to listen carefully and courteously to make informed decisions based on the facts presented and what I feel is in the best interest of the people and businesses of Putnam County. I will refrain from unnecessary interruptions and I will be appreciative and respectful towards applicants, members of the staff, other members of the commission, I will support the decisions made by the majority, and I will be fair and objective in all that I do as a member of the Putnam County Planning Commission. And now if you turn your mic on and... <laughs> it's on. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, she turned it on for me. Good, we got you, got you covered. Um, then I'll read our introduction, and then we'll be underway, folks. I'm sorry to keep you 13 minutes into the meeting. This is a public hearing and we are the Putnam County Planning Commission. We're designated local planning agency for the county as described under Title 11, Chapter 163 of the Florida Statutes. And we function under the authority of Articles 11 and 12 of the Putnam County Land Development Code. The primary responsibility of the commission is to serve as an advisory body to hear and make recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners on matters related to provisions of and proposed amendments to the Putnam County Comprehensive Plan and the Putnam County Land Development Code. The members of this board will review each application and make a recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners at a regularly scheduled meeting on May 25th, 2021. Procedurally, we will call each case by name and number. A member of staff will then briefly explain to us the nature of each request. We will take comments from the applicant or their representative, followed by any public comments concerning the request. 
Please direct all comments or statements to the commission and not to other people in the audience. Before speaking, we will ask each person to be recognized, come forward to the lectern, and identify his or herself by name and address. After all persons wishing to speak have been heard, we will entertain a motion from the commission. This motion will be voted on by the commission members and become our recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners. The Board of County Commissioners will make the final determination regarding the application. We have three zoning cases today. The first is R21-006. Wendy. Wendy Hickey. <coughs> Wendy Hickey. Plan. You're not on. I'm on. Are you? Yeah. Just didn't pick okay. you up. How about now? Better? Better. Okay. Wendy Hickey, Planning and Development Services, Putnam County. Um, this application is for um, Chris and Anita Hancock. It's a zoning amendment for a single parcel containing 0.68 acres <coughs> from commercial retail two to commercial general three, C3. The property is located at 243 North US Highway 17 Palatka. The parcel is designated commercial and urban service on the uh, future land use map. The parcel of course is 0.68 acres there's an existing commercial building on the parcel. There's some paved parking in the front. And the requesting, requested zoning to C3 would allow the property to be used in conjunction with the property to the north, which is zoned C3 and currently is used as a portable toilet business. Here is the aerial, the future land use, the current zoning, and the comprehensive plan. The commercial category on the flume consists of areas intended to serve as a primary commercial locations in the future. These areas are located in close proximity to concentrations of population that have good access to arterial and collective roads. The urban service area category consists of areas where urban type infrastructure has been provided or will be provided within the next 10 years. The uses associated with this requested C3 zoning are allowed within the commercial future land use category and the urban service category. The subject parcel has access to US Highway 17, is designated a principal arterial facility in the comprehensive plan. The parcel has been utilized for commercial purposes. The existing zoning, C2, the purpose of the C2 zoning district is to provide commercial excuse me, to provide commercial zoning district and like commercial use in the rural center, urban service, urban reserve, and commercial future land use classifications. The property is proposed to be zoned C3. The purpose of the C3 zoning district is to provide general commercial zoning for a mixture of light and medium intensity commercial uses that require immediate access to major and minor arterial roadways in the rural center, urban service, urban reserve, and commercial future land use classifications. The analysis. The commercial and urban service future land use allows for the commercial uses. The commercial general C3 allows for a mixture of light and medium intensity commercial uses, and the parcel has access to US Highway 17, which has an adopted level of service of D and operates access acceptably. Already, the, this parcel is already developed, and there's no new traffic that was expected to be with this approval because it's in conjunction with the existing use next door. And the surrounding land uses are primarily commercial. The findings and the recommendations that staff finds that the proposed rezoning to C3 is consistent with the comprehensive plan, consistent with local requirements for C3 zoning, and compatible with the surrounding land uses. Staff recommends approval of the request to amend the zoning map from commercial retail to C2 to commercial general C3 for the subject parcel. Thank you, Wendy. Are there any questions from the board to staff? Okay, hearing none, the applicant is present. Would you like to speak, Mr. Hancock? Please come forward and identify yourself. My name is Chris Hancock. I live at 280 West Tokoy Road, Palatka, Florida, 32177. Um, this was a gas station when it was built back in the 60s. The gas tanks have been dug up and it's all been approved by the EPA. You'll find no paperwork, however. 
uh, I have it all. <laughs> trying to get it straight through the state. Uh, at any rate, then it became a glass shop. It was builder's glass for many years, owned by Mr. Silcox. And I purchased it from his wife. And uh, I just want to expand my business over to that area. And I want to access and egress sometimes from the main highway, Highway 17. If you all remember back, this would actually be in compliance. A few years back, we changed the zoning laws. Therefore, I had to bring my other building in front of the zoning board to change it. And I'm just trying to get in compliance in case something ever happens to me. My family can get rid of the business or whatever they want to do and not have any problems. So thank, thank you for your time. Any questions of Mr. Hancock? Mr. Hancock used to sit in this chair, so he's, he's well, well, well familiar with. I don't know which sides was the best to look at. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Okay, um, are there any people in the audience who would like to speak either for or against this particular application? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Close the public hearing portion of this this particular case. Bring it back to the board for a motion, discussion, and vote. I recommend approval of R21-006, agenda item number one. Thank you, Mr. Hacker. And Mr. And Mr. Um, Mr. Joel down there, Mr. Dansler has uh, seconded that. Thank you very much. Any discussion from the board? Okay. Um, hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. All opposed, signify by saying nay. Mr. Hancock, this is past us. So the next step will be the Board of County Commissioners on May the 25th. So thank you very much. You don't have to leave. <laughs> it's too exciting. <laughs> it's an opportunity to leave and you're leaving, I know. <laughs> you didn't, get, didn't get to do that before. Thank you. Our second case is R21-007. And Wendy, I believe you're presenting that as well. This, um, this application is for um, Alvin Price and William Isaac. It's a zoning map amendment for a single parcel containing 1.61 acres from commercial retail, C2, to commercial general, C3. The property is located at 345 South US Highway 17 in East Palatka. The parcel is designated commercial <coughs> C2. The parcel is 1.61 acres. The parcel has pre previously contained a hotel, mobile homes, a garage. Currently, the property is vacant. Re it was recently rezoned from C2 and R2 to C2 in 2019. And now the requesting is for... Oh, I'm so sorry, excuse me just a moment. That's okay. Thank you so much. And now the request is for to zone it to C3. This is the aerial of the property. Future land use. The current zoning. The comprehensive plan, the urban service area category on the future land use map consists of areas where urban type infrastructure has been provided or will be provided within the next 10 years. The uses associated with the requested C3 zoning district are allowed within the urban service area category. The subject parcel has access to US Highway 17, which is designated a principal arterial facility in the comprehensive plan. The parcel has been utilized for commercial uses in the past. The existing zoning is C2. The purpose of the C2 zoning district is to provide commercial zoning district for like commercial use in the rural center, urban service, urban reserve, and commercial future land use classifications. The proposed, uh, the proposed zoning, commercial general, the purpose of that zoning district is to provide general commercial zoning district for a mixture of light, medium intensity commercial uses that require immediate access to major and minor arterial roadways in the rural center, urban service, urban reserve, and commercial for future land use classifications. The urban service area of future land use allows for commercial uses within the C3, within C3. It allows for a mixture of light and medium intensity commercial uses. The parcel has 
access to Highway 17, which is a principal arterial, and adopt a level, a level of service of D and operates acceptably today. The surrounding land uses are primarily commercial and residential. The adjacent parcel immediately to the north is zone C2 and contains the Cheyenne Saloon. The parcel immediately to the south is zone C2 and has been used for commercial purposes in the past. The residential land use abuts the rear of this parcel. The staff finds that the rezoning to C3 is consistent with the comprehensive plan, consistent with the local requirements for the C3 zoning, compatible with the surrounding land uses, and staff recommends <coughs> approval for the request to amend the zoning map from commercial retail to, to commercial general C3. Thank you. Any questions of staff? Joel. The question that I would have is, is there a use they're wanting to do on it or they just want to just upgrade the zoning? That at this point, it's just basically to upgrade the zoning. The applicant is here if you have any questions, but it, it's for future for the future. Okay. Did we not, you may not know this, Wendy, or you may have it in the files. I believe we saw this case a couple of years ago, or saw this site a couple of years ago. Yeah, th that's yeah. where it went from C2 to R2. It's in the it's in my first slide. Right, I think it was, I think the initial request was for it to go to C3. If I'm recalling, Joel, do you remember that? I don't remember, but you know, in, in situations like this, and uh, I know we just, he had a use for it, last guy. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he knew what he was gonna use it for, but for somebody to arbitrarily just raise their zoning, I mean, it would be nice, you know, especially there's residential behind, mm -hmm. so it's gonna impact residences behind it. I mean, I, I, would, I would just love to see our whole, our whole, uh, zoning go more toward a PUD and that way it's 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 it is what it is you know it's going to be zoned for what they're going to use it for it, it's just I mean I, I think it's probably okay as a C3 but I just it, it just seemed like to me that we'd be a lot better off you know as far as the county goes and 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 our and our growth and usage of our land and all that they would lean toward, toward PUDs instead of just zoning upgrading the zoning. Okay, any other comments or questions of staff? Yes. One thing you may do is... Uh, we need a microphone for you, Gabriel. Yeah. One thing I might suggest is uh, recommending conditions be attached to the rezoning if you're worried about um, adverse impacts on the residential, you could recommend a, a more dense uh, screening be required along any residential properties. Um, and then the Board of County Commissioners could entertain that uh, once they consider the item. Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what you just said, but I'm <laughs> <laughs> putting a, a better a, a buffer, I think is what buffer. you're talking. That's yeah, right. Better yeah. buffer. Okay. Yes, sir. So you could, if if this uh, commission were to recommend approval, you could recommend approval with a condition that there be uh, an enhanced screening, uh, a vegetative screening, or a buffer um, than what would normally be required by the code. Some kind of sound break, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I understand. But if if let's say I know in C two, for instance, you can have a. Um, which, which was surprising. It was like you can have a nightclub, but in this one you can just have a club. Right. I mean, what, what's the difference between a club and a nightclub? Oh. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, I would I, think I, that I a would... nightclub would be, you know, would make a lot of noise and stuff. And have the ones intended to be, I think, more like a fraternal organization, and then the nightclub is a nightclub. more like a bar type thing. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's what the fraternals are. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Gabriel. Um, any other questions of staff? I, I, we Microphone. Just heard, last meeting, we just heard a case on the other side of the road and north of it just a little bit to go to C3. It's sort of hard for me to turn down a C3 request <laughs> just because it's on the other side of the road. Well, uh, well, Ken, the other one actually went to C4, which would be worse, and I did vote against that if you remember correctly. But the, um, the difference between that too is, is that was resident, that didn't have residential that was abutting it like this. That was commercial on both sides. 
and in the back there was really nothing there. Well, it was road to road. Mm -hmm. It was road to road, that is correct. But on, on this one, you have residences that join right behind it. I, I'm just concerned about the residences, that's, that's all. I mean, you know, if, if I live there and, and, and uh, somebody kept upgrading the property to, to hire it, it'd be like, well, I'd like to know what they're gonna do with it. Well, it's, it's the applicants here, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, we'll have the applicant up in just a minute. I'll, I'll reserve a question to him. Okay. But uh, as we drive by it, there's a great big for sale sign. So I think the intent has something to do with the for sale sign. <laughs> well, unfortunately, in zoning issues, we, we can't base our decision on the intent. We have to base it on the land, and that's, that makes it really tough. But I, I understand. I, I, too, have I always go to that line on the application. You know, what's the purpose of this change? And, and um, future is a, is a little bit of a vague term to me. Um, any other questions of staff? We can always come back to them if we need to. Okay, I understand the applicant's present. Would you like to come forward and, and speak? You would state your name and address. Alvin Price, I live at 262 Silver Lake Road, Palacca, Florida. And the reason why I want it rezoned, I want it for future use for a building of my own, for my own business. Okay. And uh, right now I have no, no uh, recollection of building right now, and that's the reason why I wanted it zoned C3, because the Cheyenne Saloon's right beside me. They have all that noise right beside them and everything else, and the houses are right behind them. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, as far as what I want to build is just a building there later on, you know, for my own future use. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. I might use it for a candy shop, a restaurant, whatever, you know. And right now it is for sale. I thought I'd see what I, what's out there and what they can give me for the property if I decide to sell it. So I just put it on the market for that. Okay. As far as a buffer in the back, there is an easement. and There is buffers behind there with, with plants and all that stuff. If you mm -hmm. look behind the trees that I've cleared and everything, all that's already there. It's been there for years. Years ago, my aunt that I understand owned all that property. She owned the Cheyenne Saloon. She used mm -hmm. to call it the old Shady Rest. But she's dead now, so I can't ask her. But my sister tells me, did you know your aunt used to own that? And I said, no. She said she used to own the old hotel I tore down, redid all the property and everything. And I said, no, I didn't know that because I was a baby then. So. And then the property come up for sale. It was a tax sale, and I bought it, and I didn't realize that she actually owned it. So I said, well, God, this is nasty, so I'll clean it up. <laughs> so that's what I did. Okay. And now I'm at it right now. So as far as it's gone so far. Okay. And do I recall correctly, correctly you were thinking about putting a fireworks? At one time I was. Yeah, I was going to do that at one time. Okay. But that's still on the back burner for right now. Okay. So. Any reason why you didn't do the fireworks? Well, I haven't, I haven't had a chance to talk to the fire marshal. My attorney has, has been trying to contact him. We've emailed him to find out some information that we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And he will not return our emails whatsoever. Wow. And I'm having a hard time. It's taken me almost two years to get this far with it, you know. And uh, I thought Putman County could use one. Because there's nothing, you know, not nothing over there. And I talked to everybody here, and they said, well, we've got to go over to St. Augustine. We've got to go way on down, you know, and it would only be, like, seasonal, you know, mm -hmm. about two months out of the year, basically. So that's the reason why I kept the property, because mm -hmm. I thought, well, you know, that would be all right to do if I can get the permission and all that for it. So, okay. Mr. Price, is there a reason why you didn't go for C3 the first time and just well, went for I Well, did, I didn't know what I, I didn't know I could. Okay. Because the man that's was doing enough. the thing, he said, well, we'll go C2. So I thought, well, that's the highest they had. But I didn't know it went to C3 and C4. I got you. So that's the reason why I'm doing this. So if I want to put some on, I'll have the zoning to do that with. So so in, in next year, you're going to come back and go for C4? No, thank you. I don't like heavy-duty equipment, believe me. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> now, C4's, C4's out of my, my realm right now. So. <laughs> that's about all. Yeah. Okay. 
Any other questions of Mr. Price? I have a Tom. question for him. Mm -hmm. So do you have, I mean, your, your surrounding neighbors, have they complained at all about what you're trying to do? Nothing. No. Your existing business owners, I mean, right next door to you, do they complain? No. Residential complain? No. Thank you. No. No. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Price. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone here who would like to speak either for or against this application? <clears throat> okay. Seeing none, I will close the public portion of this meeting and bring it back to the board um, to entertain a motion, uh, discussion, and vote. I'd like to make the motion that we approve the application R21-07 from C2 to C3. Okay, Mr. DeSantis moves that we approve it. Do I have a second? I second it. Mr. Roberts seconds it. Thank you. Any dis further discussion? Yes, I would like to see a little bit more buffer on the residential side. Okay. Um, if we pass this. Or okay. We probably need to amend the motion and include that in the massive, in the original motion. Correct, Mr. Perry? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Madam Chairman, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I'm over here. <laughs> <Sorry. Okay. laughs> I'm not used to your voice yet, David. <laughs> um, can I just go over the buffer that's currently required by code and see if that's sufficient so that we, yes, please. we just have to specify what over the code we would need. Um, so this would be a 20 foot wide buffer between C3 and R2. Uh, the requirements are, oh gosh, I'm sorry, this thing. <laughs> it's gonna get better. Um, just jump to four pages above this. Okay. Um, they have the option of screening it with six foot high um, evergreen plants with a maximum opacity or a minimum opacity of 75% or masonry wall of six feet in height, um, architecturally finished on both sides. Um, if a block wall, then painted on all sides. A solid uh, fence, these are all options. So this, this is all or. Um, six feet in height, but a berm. Say again? But one of these. Um, That's right. It would be one of those. Um, and um, so that, one of those components, in addition to uh, a row of evergreen canopy trees that are not less than eight feet in, high, or in height at the time of planting, a minimum of 1.5 inch caliper, uh, not spaced more than 20 feet apart. Um, and the trees are to be planted within 10 feet of the property line. So, and if, there's a 20 foot uh, setback required there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So if you wish to exceed that, we would have to have a number over that amount. Mr. Frohlich, what is your pleasure there? You were no, that, that sounds fine. I don't mind a six foot solid fence or something and trees and stuff. I just want to buffer the noise, whatever they do at C3, because I know that can be intense. Yep. That's all I was just trying to protect the neighbors. They're not complaining now, but. That's true. Nobody's you know, here. Nobody's, nobody's here, nobody's but here. still, <laughs> want to protect the neighbors, want to protect the property owner. And then he'll have trouble when things will be disappearing and trees will be dying. And <laughs> things happen. We're painting a very bad picture for you, <laughs> Mr. Price. <laughs> but that's okay. They're doing their job. Tom, did you have something further to add? No, I, I felt that there's an existing buffer in, in our code already that more than sufficient. Yeah. Better than most, and I see no reason why we should add anything else. Okay. I didn't realize it was 20 feet, too. Yeah. So. Okay. All righty. Um, Mr. Price, I know you're way back there, but the trees that are there, I mean, I saw trees. I really don't know if they were evergreen trees or not. I don't think what's existing back there is the buffer we're talking about. But the easement takes care of the 20 feet, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So, evident. There's a lot of shrubs, everything there. I mean, it's everything. Shrubs and stuff like that. Okay. I think if this were developed before it would be able to get a building permit and everything, you would be required to bring that buffer up to current code specifications. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Okay. And that's going to be required before you could could actually get a get a business permit or building permit for that property. So is that correct, Wendy? That, that would be yes, part of our review process. Right. Okay. The, 
Yeah. May, may I make a comment? Um, one of the options was a block wall. It just seems like to me that 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 that's a pretty broad. You go from a concrete block wall to a tree every 20 feet. That's pretty broad of a spectrum. I mean, you know, everybody's going to go with a 20 foot tree. I just I think the, the I think the ruling is all the ors is 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 too extreme from one end to the other. I don't think there's anything to do do about it, but it might be something we want to look at. We, we will be, Joel. Uh, that's yeah. the land development code, and that's next on our plate. Yeah. So yes, we'll be doing a lot of looking at those things when we get into that. Anything else? Okay. So our, mo our motion is what stood to start. With. The motion would stand as it was made to approve the request as it is in order with the goals, objectives, and policies and uh, the, the land use code. Okay, uh, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please fix, signify by saying aye. 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 Um, chair votes aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The motion carries. We have unanimously approved this. Recommendation will go to the Board of County Commissioners on May the 25th. Uh, at their meeting, which usually begins at 9 a.m. in the morning. But they will give you a time certain for the, uh, the zoning hearing. Okay? Thank you very much. Moving on, we'll go to case R21-008. You do have an email um, that was addressed to Mrs. H Ms. Hickey concerning the um, owner applicant's inability to be here with us this afternoon uh, due to a personal conflict. But um, that doesn't mean we can't hear the case. We hear many cases with absentee owner applicants. So, Wendy, would you please proceed? This application is for Randall Malatak. Um, it is a zoning map amendment request for a single parcel from residential R2 to agricultural. The property is located on the west side of Hart Lake Drive. The property is address is 167 Hart Lake Drive, Interlochen. The parcel is designated AG1 on the future land use map. The parcel is 8.27 acres in size. It's approximately 637 feet of frontage on Hart Lake Drive. No known wetlands nor special flood hazard area on the parcel. The parcel is currently vacant. This is the aerial of the parcel. This is the future land use map and the current zoning district. The agricultural one category consists of areas used for cropland, pasture, and other agricultural activities, vacant, vacant land, and residential parcels, some of which have exceeded the allowable density of one dwelling unit per 10 acres, down to one dwelling unit per five acres. It is intended that large share of this land will remain act in active agricultural production in the future. The existing zoning of R2 is to provide a residential zoning district that's inclusive of mobile homes for use in the rural residential, rural center, urban, urban service, urban reserve land uses. It may also be used to implement the residential use policies of the Agriculture 1 and Agriculture 2 future land use categories. The use categories allowed within the R2 district is a residential single family, a mobile home, and a community residential home having six or less occupants. The proposed zoning of agriculture is to implement the Agriculture 1 and Agricultural 2 land use cap classification shown on, shown on the Putnam County Future Land Use Map. The use categories allowed within the AG district is residential single family, agricultural general, and other uses are artificial ponds that are five acres or less in size, livestock, residential, mobile home, or a religious facility less than 10,000 square feet of gross area on a minor collector or higher roadway functional classification. The future land use designation, Agriculture 1, is consistent with the, and the ag zoning is consistent with the designation. The uses associated with this requested ag zoning district are allowed in Agriculture 1 land use category. Hart Lake Drive is an unpaved county maintained road. The development on this site will be served by well and septic system permitted by the Department of Health. There's no known wetlands or flood hazard areas on the parcel. The surrounding land uses are residential. Staff finds that the proposed rezoning to agriculture is consistent with the comprehensive plan 
and the future land use map, consistent with the local requirements for the ag zoning and com compatible with the surrounding land use. Staff recommends approval for the request to amend the zoning map from R2 agri to agriculture for this parcel. And that would be ag one or two at this present time? It would just be for the zone. It, the oh, land zoning use, is ag, yeah. right. I'm the sorry. zoning is ag. Yeah. <laughs> Been in dealing with ag one and two quite too much. Okay, any questions of uh, Ms. Hickey? I have a question. It says we're doing five acres. It doesn't say that? Yeah, what, what happened was when he originally applied for his application, he was not aware that he could he have his house later, do his agricultural pursuit, which is his greenhouse, and have his agricultural. He thought he had to keep the R2 for his house later. So when I had the conversation with him, when I received the file, um, he told me that his future was that he was do starting with the greenhouse on, on the parcel, and then eventually he was building a house. He was going to be putting a, a residence on it. I said, in that case, you really need to have it completely ag, because you would have your one dwelling unit, which would be associated with your agricultural use on the property. So that's why his application um, looked a little strange, had the additional And I'm sorry, I was supposed to announce that when I called the case. Okay. And, <laughs> and, and we had a little back and forth after, you know, after we received the application to explain to him that this was, this was a better um, way for him to accomplish his goals. So we're rezoning the entire eight lots. Eight, eight acres. Yeah. Eight acres, Well, yes. this, is, this is a recorded subdivision, correct? And they're all, they're all they're zoned, they're. It's only one parcel here we're talking about. Yeah. This parcel of eight acres is a single parcel. It's got a lot of little uh, subdivisions around it. This parcel is block 50 of a subdivision with eight lots in it. Is that, is that not correct? I, I didn't see so. that on the map, so. I had not seen that, sir, but I will, um, I'm going to check right now. Give Here, just a you can look at it if you want to. I happen to bring that map with me. Okay, okay well, I'm going to pull it up on the property appraisers just to uh, see what it says here. Did you by chance share that with staff before today's meeting? I just got it. Okay. Excuse me, when things like that come up, give it to staff before we start the meeting, okay? It does appear here that there, there are four parcels looking like there are four numbers on that particular site. Uh, if that's the case, it's going to have to go to the county commission to vacate that subdivision. Mm -hmm. It's a block of a subdivision. It's not the entire subdivision. It's not platted. It is platted. Uh, it is platted. Yes, it does appear to be platted. Um, there, there do appear to be four lots there. Um, however, the the rezoning can proceed without the vacation. Uh, the vacation would have to come later if if the property is to be developed in a certain okay. form. But uh, he can place a, a, a home and have agricultural uses on it. And so it could, the, the entire parcel, the entire block, regardless of whether it has four, uh, eight individual parcels or four individual parcels on it, that can all be rezoned to agriculture. Yes, ma'am. And down the road, if he wanted to do anything differently with this, he would vacate that subdivision to do any building that would be in excess of his one home? Well, um, with these, this is probably an old subdivision from, it, mm -hmm. it, it, I may be able to pull it up here, but if it's one of the 1920 subdivisions, there, there are subdivisions like that all over the state of Florida where people have joined parcels and okay. their legal descriptions will show many parcels but they're able to build on it because they've combined the parcels and basically drawn a Z bar over the old. Um, I agree that that does require a vacation and or a revision to the mm -hmm. uh, original plat, but because they're so old, a vacation would be most appropriate. Is but this it, something that we should probably possibly table and let staff further investigate before we approve anything or? I don't believe it has any, uh, the, the underlying subdivision would have any bearing on, on the decision made today. 
uh, but that would be up to the commission. Okay. I mean, as I look at it, and you're looking at the same map I'm looking at, right? Yes, sir. There's eight, eight basically one acre lots. Yes, sir. But that, that won't affect the rezoning at all or the down zoning to agricultural. I, I, I realize that, but couldn't that man put eight houses, one on each lot? No, sir. The, 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 the lot is currently combined, and we'd have to, he would have to go back to the original lines in the plat. Um, and if you'd like, if you'd like, I can try to pull it up now, but um, we'd have to even study it to see if, if the lots met our current lot sizes. Um, we wouldn't treat those as lots of record if they're not existing in their current or in their previous form now. You would not create these eight lots as lots of record? No, sir. No, because they're, they're presently combined. Combining a lot for tax purposes has nothing to do with a subdivision. No, I, I agree. Uh, but it, the, the lot combinations do come through our department. And if we issue a permit based on a combination where they're over lot lines and old subdivisions lot lines, so they, they give us a... Uh, a survey showing Z bars over those old lot lines, then we would issue a permit to build a house per the new boundaries. Now, I know that's happened quite a bit in the past. Going forward, the way we're treating this is by in the, using vacations. Um, but I don't know what the history of this parcel is and whether they came through our department to just receive a sign off. Um, and I'm not sure that we would even have the record. Um, we would study the deed to see how long it's been as, in its current configuration and at what point it started to be transferred in that form. All right. Um, I apologize. I did not ask if there was anyone in, who wanted to speak in favor or against. Craig, you raised your hand. Please state your name and address. Uh, Craig Sherrar, 147 Pine Tree Road, East Palaka. Platting has nothing to do with zoning. I agree. Platting is a f way of setting up recordings for descriptions of property, as opposed to having endless meets and bounds, we then go to plats. You can have ag land platted, industrial land platted, and if a well, first of all, which I'm surprised hasn't been mentioned, if your future land use map says it's supposed to be ag, you've got to have a compelling reason not to put it into what your future land use map told you what to do, right? Uh, the existing yes. zoning, I'm not sure when the zoning was adopted and whether the future land use map was adopted afterwards. The agricultural district would be more consistent. Well, I can guarantee you that we all pretty much know and I'm not saying this to be the meaning, but if you've been around Putnam County long, you know that most of these subdivisions got put in before there was zoning, especially out in Interlock. And, and then the planning phase came in over top of it. And the reason why the future land use map, which I think is the one that was probably done 25 years ago, took all of those not quite antiquated subdivisions out in Interlock and changed them to ag, was to do exactly what this guy's trying to do, which is get all those chopped up parcels turned into uh, uses which were more consistent exactly. than exactly. 30,000 lots that will never provide services to. <laughs> Correct. The um, other thing is, is that once you change that zoning, it doesn't make any difference if there's one lot there or 50,000 lots there. If he wants to re-chop it, he's got to follow the zoning. So if he has less than five acres and he's turned it into ag, he can't put a residential property on there because he doesn't meet the minimum five acres for a residential lot in an ag area. Right, so, and this is, uh, this is future land use of Ag 1. So. Yeah, so that's really, it really needs to be put into that because he's making it consistent with what it is that the county has decided it's until it makes a change. Yeah. Once the zoning goes into effect, the ag or the subdivision just becomes a legal description for property which is now zoned ag and he has to conform his current use with the 
zoning that he has asked for it to be put into. That's right. That's correct. And and the the zoning the, the zoning is affects the platting process in so far as the the splitting of property. So they would have to meet the minimum lot sizes for the right. zoning district. But right. Mike, do you have any comment on that? No, ma'am, I do not. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. All right. <laughs> the minimum lot size for ag, an ag lot, if I'm not mistaken, is one acre? Yes, sir. But they could not divide this without going through our subdivision process. Right. Yeah. Right. They can't divide it going through. It's already a subdivision. You're right. But I haven't studied whether the lot width is uh, compliant, but... Since we're talking about the subdivision, let me just pull up the old subdivision. I can, I can tell you that it probably is, because you say there's 600 and some feet on the short side, correct? Mm -hmm. It's basically a square. Because right now, as the R2 zoning, you would be able to have six lot, uh, one, two, three, eight, eight lots. Eight lots. Mm -hmm. yeah. Today, with the R2. Correct. Right, and that's... And now he's going into one. And the one acre is only, it's based on whether you're on a, on a paved road. I think this is on a paved road, but. No, nope, this is not paved road. road. <laughs> okay, so it's not. So. Um, you have to have a minimum of 150 foot on the short side. Right, so still trying to pull 600 up 600 feet would make here. that happen. Yes, I mean, you've, you've got eight one acre lots because you're, you're eight point two so you're going to have just a hair over an acre for each one and you're going to have there is no problem with meeting the 150 foot frontage i think based on his intended use that's kind of moot but i do think that does need to be uh, researched and conveyed back to him so he understands that his piece of property has some imaginary lines on it I mean, based on his letter, the only thing he wants is to put a house, a greenhouse, and a, mm -hmm. and a barn. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And evidently, from the way I read it, you've told him that he can do that. Yes. Well, if he's happy with that, I'm not going to try to tell him to do it differently. But. Okay. Do I hear a motion to the effect to either approve or deny this case? I move we recommend to approve rezoning R21008. Mr. That Ross? is consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of Putnam County Comprehensive Plan. And I'll second it. Okay, Mr. Roberts made the motion, and Tom DeSantis made the second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. All opposed, please say nay. The motion carries. So, Wendy, as you're talking with him, please do let him know. I'm sure he has a hint of this, but let him know that there's some could be some issues there. All righty, that concludes our public hearing portion of the meeting. Uh, this today, we pushed that back last meeting. Uh, we've asked Mr. Perry to give us a brief overview of uh, our Sunshine Law op regulations and requirements dealing with ex parte communication, dealing with our being required to recuse ourselves in the event of a, a conflict of interest. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Perry and uh, let him take it from here. Thank you, Ms. Roberts, and good afternoon, Commission members. Um, what I have to share with you this afternoon is not directed to a particular person or in response to a particular incident. It's simply for in, uh, informational purposes. Um, Ms. Roberts, our chairperson, has asked that I provide a brief, <coughs> excuse me, brief presentation on three subjects which impact your ability to be effective <laughs> board members who are capable of performing their duties in accordance with the law. The first is the, quote, sunshine, unquote, law. Please note that this is a law. 
1967, the Florida legislature enacted the Government in the Sunshine Law. This law can be found in Chapter 286 of the Florida Statutes. This statute establishes a basic right of access to most meetings of boards, commissions, and other governing bodies of state and local government agencies or authorities. The Putnam County Planning Commission, having been formed pursuant to the authority of the Putnam County Commission, is subject to the government in the Sunshine Law, as is, of course, the Board of County Commissioners. The practical effect of this law on this board is simple. All our meetings must be properly noticed, open to the public, and any records generated by the board are public records, which can be requested and inspected <coughs> by the public. The public's records law was codified at Florida Statutes 119.01 in 1991. There are exceptions to the, or exemptions to the Sunshine Law and the public records law but I can't think of any exemptions that would apply to this board. As members of this board, what you must remember is that you cannot meet outside of a properly noticed and scheduled meeting. You must not discuss a matter pending before the board or that you know is to be brought before the board unless that discussion is taking place at a properly noticed and scheduled meeting. If this board attempts to take any official action outside of a properly noticed and scheduled meeting, it will not be binding on anyone. The second issue I'd like to discuss with you is, involves ex parte communications. An ex parte communication is an oral or written communication which is made without proper notice to all parties and or without the participation of all parties to an administrative proceeding and is not on the public record. An ex parte communication is, in the most serious instance, an attempt to sway or influence a decision of this board. Some ex parte communications may be designed or intended to solicit some indication as to how a board member views a particular matter and may be inclined to vote on that matter. The ex parte rule is designed to preserve the due process rights of all parties to an administrative hearing. I caution you to avoid contacting or receiving communication from anyone who has a case or an interest in any matter before this board. If you are contacted, immediately inform that person that you cannot speak to them. Even the most innocent conversation could result in your disqualification from discussing a matter with your fellow board members and or voting on a matter. You must make sure to maintain your impartiality. Every board member must avoid even the appearance of impropriety. So that we are clear, there can be no verbal or written communications with any interested party outside of this meeting. Before anyone asks, that includes sign language, Morse code, or smoke signals. Just don't, <laughs> just don't do it. <laughs> and finally, closely aligned with ex parte communications, and they do often overlap, is conflict of interest issues. In the context of your service on this board, a conflict of interest occurs when an individual's personal interest, whether family, friendships, financial, or social factor, factors, could compromise his or her judgment decisions or actions. Being human, we often ask to help or be nice to someone. This is not the place for those sentiments. It is, however, for this board to work together to fashion remedies that may help reach an equitable resolution. No, prop no properly recognize, not properly recognizing or dealing with a conflict of interest will undermine the integrity of this board. You must be willing to ask yourself, number one, does your knowledge of the facts and circumstances surrounding a particular matter render you unable to consider that matter in a fair and impartial matter, manner? Your knowledge about a particular matter must not be obtained through an ex parte communication. Number two, does your relationship with an applicant render you unable to consider a particular matter 
in a fair and impartial manner. Would an applicant expect special treatment from you? If so, recuse yourself. Number three, am I making a decision that benefits an applicant that is not justified? For instance, a conflict of interest would, interest would arise if you owned a piece of property adjacent to an applicant and your decision benefited your property in some way. As I'm sure you now realize, the Sunshine Law and the rule uh, against ex parte communications and conflicts of interest are in, any, are in many respects intertwined. Your effectiveness, effectiveness as a board member will be defined by your ability to adhere to these relatively simple rules of impartiality. If you, ever, if you are ever about to take an action which you feel might violate the Sunshine Law uh, or might be an ex parte communication or you feel like there's a con, uh, conflict of interest, um, please call me, email me, get in touch with me some way, shape, or form so we can talk about it before it goes any further. I appreciate your, your attention and uh, I'll answer any questions you might have. Yes, ma'am. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll give her a clean copy. Okay. I actually wrote all over this one Just a little bit. Yes. Sure. I'll be happy. Well, I'll be here tomorrow, so I'll, I'll make sure she gets it. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. You're I quite welcome, ma'am. Thank you, and I appreciate the board's attention. You know, these are things that we don't often think about because we are, as Mike said, human. And um, we want to be humane as we're being human, and that sometimes gets us in Mike's trouble. Mike's on. I'm sorry, I didn't have my mic on. We want to be humane sometimes, and that gets us in trouble. So um, thank you very much. We'll call you professor from now on. <laughs> you did a great job. with me, Madam Chair. <laughs> you did a I've great job. worse anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I think I was yesterday. So, um, Any other new business that needs to come before the board? Under old business, we do have the approval of the minutes of March the 10th, 2021. Uh, does anyone have any additions, deletions, or corrections to the minutes of, of March 10th? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion for their approval. I'll make a motion. We approve the minutes of our last meeting. Mr. Danzler has made the motion. Do I hear a second? I second. Mr. Froelich has made the second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor of approving the minutes of March the 10th, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye, anybody opposed? All right, the minutes from the last meeting are approved. Remember, we will meet on Tuesday, May the 4th at 4 p.m. to review the data and analysis for the comp plan resubmission to the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, hopefully we'll have that out to you a day or so before that, depending on how expedient we can get materials transferred to and from the three of us that are going to be working on this. Um, I do want to thank in, in absentia uh, Jim Troiano for all he's done with the comp plan. He picked it up midstream. He became a planner and was kind of brought into it on the fringe and then became the executive director of planning and development and uh, got submersed in that baptismal pool. And uh, then he became totally responsible for it on Mike Brown's departure. And now he has the unenviable role of representing what's done and has been done um, to the Board of County Commissioners. And um, he's done a yeoman's job. And we, I really appreciate you, Jim, if you're out there listening. Um, and I thank all of you. I thanked you yesterday. I, I told the board yesterday that I have never worked with a group of people that had more integrity, honesty, and impartiality, and who had more devotion to the needs and development of Putnam County and that you are above reproach and contrary to what my girl cousin published in the newspaper that none of you are in the pocket of a developer. I missed that. I didn't say that yet. So, um, just so you know, even that's my feeling. 
But anyhow, we are, um, we're at a place that is really good. It's exciting. And Jim and I will be meeting probably next week sometime to talk about the game plan going forward with the Land Development Code um, and what we're going to do and how we're going to go about getting public input and uh, whether we have to go out and stand in the middle of Krill Avenue and drag them into the building, um, we might have to do that. We've had a lot of public meetings, most both in person and via Zoom, and um, there just haven't been that many people to come out to talk about the comp plan. Melrose was an excellent meeting, but we had two or three here in the commission chambers. We had five or six, or no, I guess about 10, on the Ag Interest uh, Zoom meeting. We had uh, two or three on the General Putnam County meeting, one of whom was Mr. Sherrar, another of whom was, was Michael Woodward. Um, so we've had few and far between, but we're gonna try our best to, to get them to come in and talk to us before. And not in the paper. Right, <laughs> before we, bring it to the county commission before we even mold it into a plan. That's when we need their input. Now, I don't mind their criticism, but we need their input as we're doing it, and we're going to try to try to garner that as much as we can. We'll figure out a way to make it happen, and um, your participation in that process will be vital, just as it has been all along, and um, maybe we'll get to Bostwick this time, Joel. You know, we've been trying. So all I can say to you is stay safe. Um, we're still not out of the woods yet with COVID, but we're getting there. Uh, herd immunity is, is creeping up slowly, and hopefully within the next few months, we will achieve a, a good, healthy herd immunity. In the meantime, uh, carry on, keep safe, and uh, I'll see you in three weeks. Anything else? Meetings adjourned. <laughs>